it's time to read some translated books translated books by women that was i can't really sing so let's forget that and move on hello hello and welcome to a new video my name is smriti and i love to read books of various different genres i especially love to read uh, books which are translated because i think that they are really excellent and today i'm here to recommend to you 12 books that have been some of my recent favorites which were written by women and then translated into english which is the like language that i primarily or only read in and why i'm doing this is because the month of august which is coming up or if you're watching this in august or maybe later that's fine uh, you should read books translated by women all the time or books written by women that are then translated it's okay women translators also should be read i don't know what i'm saying anyway <laughs> i am doing this because august is the month of women in translation month or wit month because essentially it is the month to push more books written by women which are translated because primarily we've seen a lot of men being translated but not so much as women and this is just an idea that we should consume more of this so that like people know that like these books are in demand and then we get more books by women which are translated because that's what demand and supply functions like but yeah that is that essentially what i'm going to be doing is recommending 12 books that i have read recently like in the past few years that i have absolutely loved and i'm going to try to like rank them as well like the ranking will differ <laughs> on any given day but today this is what i think as of right now so yeah that that's basically what i have for now as an introduction and now i will move into the recommendations itself so the 12th book that i have for you is a small step in a long journey by akai padmashali now this book is i mean i wouldn't necessarily call it translated literature though it is because essentially she wrote this thanks to her conversations with um her co-writer and like the co-writer sort of like helped put this all together and there were times where she spoke in kannada so then the writer sort of translated that aspect of it because well i mean it just sort of makes sense but uh this book by the way i don't have the names of all the translators in front of me so i will definitely be putting the names in here like you know on the screen so that you can see who um it is translated by because translators work is really really important but yes anyway so this is a memoir that akai has written she is transgender um and is a woman in india who has been fighting for transgender rights since time immemorial she had to work as like a sex worker and like a bunch of different things and she fights for these rights for men women everywhere um as well as like the trans people or the hijra community in general in india and i think that she has written such a searingly truthful memoir that it sort of like hurts you a little bit when you read it because it has uh trigger warnings galore and it is very very like ruthless in the way that like she talks about the sort of experiences that she went through so definitely keep that in mind when you are reading this book but i also thought that it was so insightful and like gave me so much of knowledge about what's happening because she talks about like education and also like how the government sees trans people etc etc and like how there are bills being passed in the country etc so i just thought that it was really like informative as well and really gives you an idea of like what's happening not just in her life but also in like the world in general with the community the second book that i read actually just this year is called still born by guadalupe netel and this is a book translated from spanish i think because she is based out of mexico and i thought that this book was really really interesting it was shortlisted for the international booker prize and i don't know i didn't quite like love it as much as i did when i first read it but the more time that has passed the more i have sort of like grown to appreciate it because essentially we are following two friends who are women who basically when they were young they decided that they don't want children however one has sort of changed her mind and 
wants to have children and the other one is still pretty adamant on not having one but they are still so supportive of each other and still so like involved in each other's life and basically the woman who does decide to get pregnant has a lot of complications in her pregnancy and it's just like how she deals with it and like motherhood etc and the other one who still doesn't want children has somehow got in into mothering herself because uh, she has a neighbor who has a young son and she sort of starts helping him and then she also has these pigeons on her terrace which is like another weird tangent but um, I just thought that it was really interesting how it spoke to motherhood but also like friendships and relationships in general and I, I don't know I just really appreciated everything that it had to say in this slim little volume and yeah I would definitely recommend. At number 10 I have a completely different book and that is An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helen Turnst and this is a book basically about an elderly lady who is really up to no good because she lives in this apartment complex and she talks about how like various people like irritate her or are up to no good in their own lives and then she basically like analyves them <laughs> as the kids say these days and uh, yeah and she does it in this really like sort of interesting way and like you know she gets away with it because she's like this elderly lady and people don't think like this 80 year old or 70 year old is going to like do such a thing and she like completely gets into this whole like oh my god I don't really remember I'm just an old frail lady and all of that and it's just really really interesting and this book is broken up into like various like vignettes or like chapters which we see different parts of her life and it's just I just really like what like it was and I was like go Maud which is the name of the character and uh, yeah she fulfilled all of these like desires that I have like deep within me uh, <laughs> very very deep within me I do not plan to kill anyone but yeah it's just like you know sometimes you're just like oh I wish I could kill them and then Maud does it so that's just uh, inspiring in a different sort of way but yeah at number nine, I have a book from Slovakia and this is Boat Number 5 by Monika Kampanikova and I was just so taken by this book because first of all, I do have to shout out the publishers of this which is Seagull Books. They are based out of India and they come up with the most amazing translated books, books that I've never heard of before but usually turn out to be pretty damn great. So this one is basically following this young girl who is sort of like on her own because I think her grandmother has just passed and her mother is like this sort of absentee parent and she just has to like pass her own time so she chills with kids in her building but she also has like this one place which is like in this unexplored or like sort of abandoned green part which is close to her house where there's like sort of this house and essentially what happens is that in this book there are these twins <laughs> that she finds like these two baby twins that she finds who are sort of abandoned by her mother and she tries to like help them and take care of them and obviously this leads to disastrous results but we get to see her in the future as well as her during that time and like all of the things that sort of happen that's sort of affect her till the day and uh, yeah it was just really really interesting and really gritty and just I loved the way that it was written and it was just completely surprised me because I didn't expect to love this book as much as I did but I think that this book deserves to be read by more people especially if you love books about messed up mother-daughter relationships or just messed up like relationships in general i think that this book will definitely uh hit what you need and uh definitely recommend and i think more people need to read it so yeah okay. at number eight we have one of my favorite books of last year and that is shoko smile by john I'm, I'm so sorry i'm forgetting the author's name herself and who it was translated by but as i said i will put it down here i loved this book so much and this book is a collection of short stories that the author has written which brings in a lot of social commentary and about a lot of political things that have happened in south korea as well as like these beautiful beautiful characters that are sort of like etched into your mind and through these short stories she really gives you so much in so less that i was so intrigued by it and just like I, I absolutely fell in love. I have in the past compared her to like a Jhumpa Lehri and I, I'm, I totally stand by that. I think that like the sort of characters and the atmosphere and just the way that she talks about various different topics is just so 
amazing that like I sort of had to sort of compare her to Jhumpa Lehri who's one of my favorite writers of all time so yeah this book is a book that I would definitely recommend. Talking about Jhumpa Lehri the next book is by her and that is Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lehri. Jhumpa Lehri is an amazing author and as I've said she is one of my absolute favorites and this book was basically her latest novel that came out which was translated by her herself I think and essentially it's about this this middle-aged woman who is a professor in in like some place in Italy she doesn't really name it but we think that it's Rome and just her thoughts and like experiences as she goes about life and the thing which I love about Jhumpa Lehri is just like how descriptive she is and how she sort of builds up this character and like just everything around her and it's just so like beautiful to read because you totally feel fully immersed in it because it feels like you're there I actually have an entire review talking about this book so I will link you to that up as well as down in the uh, description but yeah this book just I don't know it was really really lovely it's not very plot based it's more like character based and just vibes essentially and uh, yeah I absolutely loved it and would wholeheartedly recommend. Another Indian author that I would like to recommend is Mahasweta Devi. Now you can't really go wrong with reading Mahasweta Devi however the book that I want to recommend to you is The Mother of 1084 and this is a really really short book where we hear of this woman and basically one day in her life where she is remembering her son who has passed and essentially he was supposedly a Naxal uh, back in the day and like he died and essentially she is reflecting on like just that day as well as like her experience with her son and what that was like and she's remembering him and grieving him but also like other members of her family refused to like sort of talk about him because he was a traitor and was a naxal or whatever and just like I thought that this book was just so moving and, and sort of breaks your heart in the best sort of way. And I feel like Maswita Devi just did such an amazing job of portraying all of these emotions in just such a short period of time. And yeah, I absolutely loved it and would wholeheartedly recommend again. All right, we have reached my top five and the fifth book that I have here is a non-fiction called Secondhand Time by Svetlana Alexevich. And this book is... Uh, a lot to read. It is a lot to read because essentially what Svetlana Alexevich did is that over decades she sat down and had conversations with people who were part of the Soviet Union back then. So not just people in Russia but also like Belarus and all of the different sort of nations and like spoke to them about their feelings about the Soviet Union then and then when it was crashing and then now as it exists. I think this was written like the last entry that she had was 2005 but yeah it was just really really heartbreaking and terrible all the things that we sort of learn of and these little instances that we hear of people and the sort of things that they sort of went through as well as like just understanding the Soviet Union in general and what it was and what came of it it was just really like eye-opening for me but also I loved how personable it was where we got to understand not just history from like a macro level but from a micro level as well and yes you do need a little bit like of a primer before you get into it because it doesn't quite explain too much of the history though I feel like if you have a little bit of a primer before you get into it I feel like you appreciate it way more than um you know if you don't have one but this book was just brutal uh, but so well written I think it won the Pulitzer Prize or like the Nobel Prize uh, one of them for literature and it was just it completely blew me away in terms of just like how she reported on these people and this time and this place and I just was I don't know it was it was a lot as I'm saying again and again but it was so worth the read and yeah moving on to number four is a thriller that I have absolutely loved and that is Confessions by Kania Minato and this book it just completely blows my mind each time I read it essentially in the very beginning we find out that this teacher is retiring from her job she's quitting her job because her young child has passed away and she thinks that the child has been murdered by one of the people in her classroom so she sort of sets out to 
do create revenge essentially and from that we get to see like the repercussions of what happens through various different people and it is just the most mind bending thing i have read because each chapter is quite long and from a different person's perspective and from each perspective in the end we get such a twist and you're like what just happened and it's just it's just crazy i absolutely loved what it did i read it compulsively i could not keep it down and it's just one of my favorite thrillers as well to sort of recommend because each time i have recommended it like people always get back to me and are like what did you just make me read it was like insane but amazing so yeah that's the sort of experience that you would probably have while uh getting into this book so for number 3 i have the elegance of the hedgehog by muriel barbary this is a book that i actually read quite a few years back but has still sort of stuck with me essentially we are following this woman who is a concierge at this really fancy apartment building and we're following her as well as this 13 year old who lives in the building who is both of them are really really smart and the concierge lady basically tries to hide her smartness but she is really into the arts and culture and all of that sort of stuff and the young girl is really smart but she hates everything that's happening around her she hates her family and everything and she thinks that no one's going to understand me so she thinks that like on her 13th birthday or yeah 13th birthday she is going to kill herself and then like light her like apartment on fire and before she does that she sort of befriends this concierge lady as well as like someone else who lives in the building and they form this beautiful friendship and it has the most amazing writing that talks about like philosophy and just the world that we live in and your thoughts and like things that you think about like capitalism and just a bunch of other things and on beauty and just so much more and i just absolutely loved the way that this book was written and all the things that it had to say and it completely broke my heart the end shattered me into tiny little pieces and actually i have spoken about this book on the books on toast channel with my dear friend vivek and i will link that up for you as well as down below so you can get to know our thoughts in general and uh, yeah that's the third best book according to me i think but as i've said it all like shuffles in between for number 2 i have elena knows by claudia pinero this was another book that i read i think last year last last year and this last year i think and it completely stayed with me this was small but brilliant and completely like devastating essentially we are following this old lady who has like a disease which i'm forgetting about right now but she finds it very difficult to move around and we get to be in her head for one day where we get to see her dealing with this and also trying to get somewhere because essentially her daughter has apparently died of suicide and she doesn't believe that that could have happened and she wants to get to a place to meet someone who she thinks can help her on this journey and it's just really really brutal to sort of read because you can sort of feel the pain that she is going through and like for example she can't really lift her head when she's walking so you get to see what she sees which are like the feet of people and like just it's just so hard to read sometimes and i have cried through this book multiple times but it just absolutely blew me away in terms of all the things that i could feel while reading this book and just how beautifully it was written and all the things that it was trying to say i was just in complete awe of it and uh it broke me <laughs> in a in a very very real way but i just I can't stop thinking about it and would definitely recommend this book though like with a caveat that it might break you as well. Okay. Of course, so, my number one recommendation is a book that is very very close to my heart and that is Rita Wellinger by Shanta Gokhale translated by the author herself actually and this is a book that was written in Marathi and translated to English and basically we follow Rita Wellinger who is currently in an institution she has been kept there because she sort of had like a breakdown of sorts and through that we get to understand her life and all the things that she sort of been through she is the eldest daughter of 
very horrible parents and just like the sort of sacrifices that she's made through her life and all the things that she's tried to do to like you know provide but also take care of herself and the sort of things that led to this breakdown and I don't know the the sort of things that Shanta Gokhale says through this book and the sort of things that sort of she hits on are just so poignant but also so wonderfully simply written. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, this book unfortunately is out of print but it is available on Kindle so I would highly recommend that you pick it up there and it is my best book of like all the um, books that I have read which is translated by... Uh, Nine tra women books tra written by women translated into English. Uh, yeah, but that's how I personally feel about it. Of course, I would love to hear some of your recommendations down in the comments. If you have read any of these books, I would love to know what you think of them or if you plan to read them, that would be amazing. I will also link you to a bunch of other videos that I have done where I've spoken about translated literature in general and you can check those out, which will include a lot of other recommendations in general but yeah that's all that I have for you right now I hope that you enjoyed it if you have reached here and don't know what to comment down below just leave me a woman emoji in uh, the comments and uh, that's all that I have for you now I hope to see you in my next video that is literally coming super soon super soon okay <laughs> that's all I have for now okay goodbye